finding the heat of reactions. Heat of reactions uh, can be calculated by using this formula. Okay, the change of energy divided by the mole of reactants or product. Mole of reactant or product means the number of mole. Eh? Number of mole of the reactants or products. Eh? Okay. Now these reactants or products must be the substance, eh? the reference substance in the uh, reactions. For example, sir, for heat of neutralizations, we use uh, water as a reference. Okay. Because heat of neutralization is the heat uh, change when one mole of water produced. So then this mole of reactants or product must be the mole of water for heat of neutralizations. Then for the change of energy, we can calculate by using this, the, this formula. You should have learned this in form 4. Eh? Okay, Change of heat energy, Q equal to mc theta, where m is the mass of the solutions, Okay, mass of the substance. In our case, uh, the, uh, the substance is the solutions. Eh? Okay, It will be the mass of the solution. And C is the specific heat capacity. In chemistry, usually the solution is water, so the specific heat capacity will be the specific heat capacities of water. And theta is the change of the temperature. So we use this formula, Q equal to MC theta, to find the change of energy. And then change of energy divided by the number of mole of reactants or product, then we can get the heat of reactions. So that is how we find the heat of reactions. When we use this formula to find heat of reactions, uh, there are a few things that we need to know. Okay, there are a few points uh, or if a few uh, things that we need to know. First, we always use the specific heat capacities of water as an approximation of the specific heat capacities of all kinds of aqueous solutions. In chemical reactions, the solutions that we use uh, may be like uh, acid or alkali or salt. Uh, may maybe the solution is uh, sodium hydroxide, okay? Or maybe it's a uh, copper sulfate uh, solution. All this is aqueous solutions, uh, aqueous solutions. Now for aqueous solutions, the specific heat capacity will be slightly lower than the specific heat capacities of water. For example, the specific heat capacities of water is 4,200. Uh. So for sodium hydroxide, maybe it's uh, 4,150 only, or maybe for copper sulfate is 4,125, okay? The specific heat capacities of the aqueous solution may be slightly lower than the specific heat capacities of water. But in SPM, in SPM, we always use the specific heat capacities of water as the approximations to the specific capacities of the aqueous solutions. Eh? So no matter it's sodium hydroxide or copper sulfate, we assume that the specific heat capacity is the same as the specific heat capacities of water. Uh, so you don't need to worry about the solutions eh? because some students say, oh, this is copper sulfate, it's not water. So can we use uh, specific heat capacities of water for the calculation? Yes, eh? you can use the specific heat capacities of water for the calculation because uh, is uh, very close. Uh, the, the specific capacities of the aqueous solution is very close to the specific, specific heat capacities of water. So that is the first things that you need to know. The second one is uh, we also use the densities of water as an approximation of the densities of all aqueous solutions. Uh, the densities of water is uh, 1 gram per uh, cm cube. Okay, 1 gram per cm cube. But for aqueous solutions, uh, the Density will be higher. Maybe it's 1.1 gram per cm cube or something like this. Okay, so the density is slightly higher, but um, but no matter what's the densities of the solutions, uh, we always use the densities of water as the approximation to the densities of all aqueous solutions. In the questions, usually they will give you the densities of water only. Yeah? They won't give you the densities of uh, sodium hydroxide or, uh, as, or any acid or any alkali. Yeah? Okay? They only give you the densities of water. And we use these densities of water as the approximations of the densities of the aqueous solutions. So that is uh, another thing that you need to know. Now, since the densities of water is 1 gram per cm cube, yeah? so every 1 cm cube, 1 gram. Yeah? Therefore, if they tell you that the the volume is 20 cm cube, then the mass will be 20 gram. So if the volume is 30 cm cube, then the mass will be 30 gram. Mm. Or the uh, volume is 50 cm cube, 50 gram. If it's 200 cm cube, then it's 200 gram. Uh, we can straight away do the conversions, okay? Because the densities of water is one gram per cm cube. 
one gram, one cm cube. Okay, so 30 cm cube, 30 gram. Uh, we can uh, do the calculations uh, very fast.